if you've decided to build your course on a flat terrain and elevate the terrain later you're probably not going to want to generate a random terrain because you know exactly where everything's going on your course you're going to want to have control over uh, the elevations so you're probably not going to want to use the random generator the terrain builder you can still use this for areas outside the areas of your course by selecting them exactly the same way as you would if you did it before creating your course but you're probably going to want to actually move the verts well if you use the adjusting verts method and selecting you can imagine it would take an awful long uh, time to do so you'll probably want to use another tool which is the terrain painter so I'm going to click on terrain and surface and you'll see a spray can at the top and this is the terrain painter if you'll click that and we've now got radius height and a few other uh, check boxes we can tick and you'll see I've now got a spray can with a red circle which is the area of that the uh, terrain painter is going to affect now the radius can be controlled up here which is default to 100 and the height that we want to raise the ground or lower the ground on the slider here now if I just click and hold this uh, and move it around a little bit like that you'll see what's happened it's added some hills a little bit haphazardly it looks um, not a very smooth effect but we've got some some terrain raised up uh, if we select a larger radius something around say 250 ish if I now rub across there and back a few times you'll see it's a bit smoother um, but it's it's raised up very quickly we've got we can end up with quite mountainous uh, terrain very very easily indeed um, so the best I've found for creating nice smooth terrain is to have a large uh, terrain brush and a small height adjustment uh, so we'll just flatten out the ground so I tend to use a brush this sort of size it's covering a lot of verts at once and a small height well we can take it down to to one with a bit of careful adjustment and if I rub over this I can go over again and again this time and it's going to accept more passes of the brush um, without creating ridiculous heights so we've got quite a nice smooth hill very good for creating very natural looking hills and it's sloping gently down and flattening out at the edges and this is because of this smooth fall off uh, which is checked here which tries to flatten out the hills as they reach the ground uh, now we can go lower than one if we double click on this we can actually type in uh, a range so I could type in 0.3 of a foot and we've now got the brush set to 0 0.3 feet so I can now brush over another area I don't think it's within the view of the it's over there but I was quite uh, vigorous with the brush there and yet I've only created a very gentle uh, quite low mound there so I've got a lot of control now um, over the height because it's only moving the verts up very very s slowly uh, so that's a good way of creating heights a tip here if you don't want to have to type in things you can still select heights less than a foot although 
the slider will only go 0 and 1, what you can do is slide your radius down to minimum and you'll then find that a foot is the maximum you can raise it and it's very easy to go down in tenth of a foot so I can go to 0 0.2, 0 0.1 very easily uh, so if I want say 0 0.3 then I can just move the radius back up to what it was and the brush is set to a nice minimal height and I can paint away and go all over your course and you can set it to a minus create very gentle valleys etc now the other setting you can choose is this absolute height one um, if I go back to a new flat one again now with the absolute height and the smooth fall off ticks if I click uh, we'll need a height much higher so I'll put this right up to about let's say I don't know, 35 36 feet with the absolute height it doesn't matter how much we move our brush it can't move until we let go uh, and then use it again it can't go higher than 36.7 feet so if I click in the middle here and hold and then rub around what you'll actually see is nothing's happening at all uh, so I let go we've got a, a mound in the middle which will be at 36.7 feet at its top and then it flattens out and the reason it doesn't affect the area around as I keep brushing because I'm holding it is because that flattening out means it's going to be all flat around this this far out so it won't actually add anything even though I'm still brushing away vigorously so it's only really good set like that to create round completely round mounds if I start anew again now the other setting is without the smooth fall off so if we turn the smooth fall off off and the absolute height is at 36 if I now brush round what you'll see is a shadow following the brush because I'm actually raising up the ground within the area that I'm moving the brush now it's only going up to 36 feet nothing higher unlike the other brush with the without the absolute height on where it will just keep getting higher and higher this is just plateaued out at 30 whatever I've got it set on 36.7 so then if I go over another part again it will add another 36.7 so we can create slopes like that but we're going to get steps as you can see uh, unless we manage to start the brush exactly on the last uh, area but it's quite useful to create plateaus and to sink down for maybe lakes you know, where you want a, a slope down and then you don't want it you want it flatter for the actual lake part uh, so that's the absolute height without the smooth fall off now there's one other setting on this which is add density now if you imagine this brush is adjusting verts our verts are set at 100 feet apart so if we want to raise the land within a smaller area that make a small hill maybe 60 foot across there's no verts there so if I rub the brush around within that area um, if I make a brush of say 40 feet somewhere around there if I click that brush there nothing's going to happen because there are no verts there for it to raise there's none within the uh, circumference of the brush so by ticking add density it will actually add more verts to that area so that it can create 
the hill we need and we can make the brush smaller and smaller it will add more and more more and more verts so if I go down to 11 feet you'll see a crazy amount of verts are now being added um, the trouble with this is a lot of the time it adds the verts very badly uh, it will work for a, a little while but if you if I zoom in now you can see it's gone a bit crazy here we've got verts crossing over other verts um, we've got a vert there with a face a very uh, narrow uh, triangle face there and all of these are going to cause us problems certainly edges should never cross over other edges like this so that's just going to cause problems as well and when the land's raised uh, with things like this happening we're going to get creases in our in our landscape and all sorts of problems shadows uh, I don't know whether any have formed because this land's quite flat but uh, you probably won't see them but believe me when you start changing textures and and raising parts of this uh, things will get messy pretty quickly and you'll, what you'll find is some of these which we're going to be discussing in a couple of videos time how to remove uh, problems uh, some of these actually won't be very easy to remove uh, the usual way so uh, I would suggest you don't use this add density when you're trying to create slopes if you want to create something in a smaller area I would suggest add the verts first if you're going to use the train brush and we'll be showing how to add verts again in the next video uh, but I wouldn't even use the terrain painter for small hills I would just plot the verts in where I wanted the hill and I would just adjust them manually there's not going to be that many it's easy to box select them and you've got full control then you can you can get your hill exactly how you want it not not in the sort of haphazard way that the terrain painter tends to do things sometimes so there may be a really easy uh, technique to get this to work well but I'm afraid I don't know it so <laughs> somebody else is gonna have to show you how to use the terrain painter uh, really effectively it's not something I use myself 